show you. Maybe you run a business or you um, kind of like want to do some creative things for your either your personal brand in your business or for someone else, your family members or something. Canva is a very good tool for you to do that for free. So today I'll be taking you on how to design a simple flyer using a template from Canva and um, owning that template and having it put out there for free. Right, um, before I move on, let me just give you a load about myself. My name is Francis Onuk. Um, I'm a visual artist and um, a visual, um, well, I say visual advocate and teacher and uh, design. I've been in the design world for more than 10 years now. I've taught lots of young people, lots of them who are on their own right becoming uh, very good graphic designers. I'm also a motion designer, illustrator, digital illustrator, and um, just all around creative person. And I've been doing this for a while, right? So I came into, or I, I, I joined Canva a couple of years back. And it was like um, a simple tool for someone to use and make quick designs on the go. Um, I started teaching a lot of people how they can actually use some of these things and create stuff for them so they don't have to always bug or look for a designer to create little, little things for them for their businesses and they can post directly. From then on, I've seen that Canva has added so many other um, new cool features that will help you push yourself further. So for this, um, I'll first give you this disclaimer, right? I've been doing this for a long time, so it's quite easy for me to get up stuff and know the principles and elements of the design. So if you want to know about the elements of design, just watch out for the next class where I'm going to be taking designing wow graphics. I'm going to teach you elements, principles, and all of those things. What makes a design great, color theory, and all of those things there. So for now, we're just going to use this wonderful app called Canva. And Canva came from uh, a couple of people who wanted to design stuff. So um, they made it so simple for other people to be able to use. It's just a simple, you work with a theme or you work from scratch. So today I'm teaching you how to work with a theme and I'm using the Canva free edition. Okay, so I'll say this first. If you're working with your mobile phone, it's a little bit harder to design on your mobile phone with Canva. Reason being that your mobile phone surface does not give you enough um, control over how to place things. So I would advise that you work with Canva on your um, laptop or desktop. Then when you're done with the design for maybe in future you want to tweak, working with a mobile phone will be easier forward and so you can build the stuff there. So this is Canva. You just go to canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. And then you log in, you can log in into social media or Google or your email and enter. So what you first see is your name and um, I have a team I've created here, so me and the guys at the rooftop can always collaborate on a particular design. I will show you that later, but this is for those who are just beginning to use Canva. I've used Canva for a while, but maybe it's stuck at somewhere. So, right, um, we have home, all, all your designs, templates, photos, apps, brand kit, and design school. Um, the rest were created for me. You have folders you can share with you. Some things are created where you can delete some stuff. Then below it, you see um, try Canva Pro. Canva Pro, which you have to pay for, either on subscription basis, allows you to do so much more with uh, what you're doing. So uh, it just depends on how you get and um, use it. So the landing page says um, design anything. So just about anything. When I started, they didn't have so many subdivisions or stuff you need but today canva has a whole lot of stuff that you can see so you can type uh, let's say search and say um, i want to make an invite you see themes for invite the book cover you see themes for that and all of those things and then when you come down here you have presentations youtube thumbnail invitation certificates video yes video was just recently added and uh, it's another cool one via book cover card Instagram post, newsletter, poster, whatnot. All right, so let's just go straight to making a flyer. Um, a flyer comes in two ways, so let's say we're gonna make one for Instagram. All right, so an Instagram post or a Facebook post. I'll just give you a small uh, description. Facebook post and Instagram post have different sizes. 
Um, but for um, graphic designers, if you just work with A5, uh, the A square, it should work for both of them. So let's do for Instagram. Because Instagram seems to be more of a picture, picture graphic um, social media. So while it's loading, yes, another thing is that Canva works with your internet. So um, it's not an offline tool, it's online. You always have to be connected and be able to do stuff with it. All right, with that being said, let's move on. Let's, let me show you what we have here. This is our workspace area. And like all design softwares, we have our where our template or design or paper should be, our prints should be, and where we place stuff. Then we have photos, we have elements, we have text, we have music, we have videos, we have background, we have uploads and folders, then we have more. All right, so uh, more is down. Uh, for you guys to see that, I will show you that where more is. So please. All right, so. We see where more is, you just click on the button and then it takes you below that. Okay, so let me just show you this and then we move on. All right, so we have the themes here. So when time you click anywhere here, this will take you to where you are. All right, so these are the recently used themes I've done. And then of course, when trending stuff is coronavirus, Instagram post, it will betray um, at the, what, yeah, so basically we're looking for a template to use. All right, so um, I don't know what kind of business, but let's just select a business that can go, uh, um, uh, um, let's look next, okay. Say we're doing food, a food Instagram post. Yeah, there's the food Instagram post. All right, so we have some nice templates and then we can select one, anyone, and see how we can own that one. All right, all right, let's look for one, that's nice. All right, so let me use this. So when you click on it, it appears on your paper and it now allows you to start editing. Fine. Okay, so this is where we are. The background is black, we have effect, filter, adjust, crop, and flip. Then we have this icon for transparency, and then lock, um, delete, the trash can, and then we have this one for adding notes, uh, copy page, and plus to add a new page below. All right, so let's just go on with this. This says, have a slice, it's a pizza party. Go to really great side of from what? Yeah, so we have an image behind, which has like a trend, um, a, a, a filter on top of it to make it black for the text to pop up. All right, so let's see what we can do and change and edit around this. When we click on this, you can see that it is highlighted. Anything you click on, the blue becomes highlighted, all right? So if you double click on the image, it shows you how the image was placed and which area was cut off. So this is the image. If you move it around, this shows you this is the image. So what I'll first do is to click on done and go to photos. Photos, you can get uh, photos from pexels.com or from Canva here. Canva works with um, a lot of um, um, photo, stock photo companies and, and the pixels is here too. And then we, once you see this pro, pictures that are pro, that means you have to pay, right? Um, so this is $1, pay to use the image. And then this have, once you see free, that means you can use the images, all right? Um, these are people's images. So what I always advise is that we take our own images, right? So let's assume we've taken our images, just go to uploads. You can upload your image from the desktop or from wherever it is, upload any image you have and you have it there, right? Very good, okay. So let's, let me look out for images I've uploaded. Yes, and this works for small businesses. If you have your logos in PNG, I want to put your logos on your designs. Just upload it as an image here, and then um, you have what to do with it. So let me look for some images I've used. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is a food, but there's no background around this, because I cropped it out. So I want one that has background, or one that does not have background, okay? 
this is meat. Uh, this one too has a background, but I think I can use it. So when you click on the picture you want, it places it on the at board where you're working from. So all we have to do is to make it big. Okay, this picture is very, very um, low resolution. So I will not use that. Let me look for something a little bit higher and uh, with a lot of clarity. So I always tell business owners to actually take their own pictures. I did not take these pictures, but I think I can just use it for just this demonstration. But it's advisable that uh, everyone takes their own pictures. All right. So this is, um, in my opinion, a lovely meal. And as you can see, the picture has a watermark. I would give credit, credit to the, the uh, kitchen supply for this picture. I got this picture off Google, but I'm not using it for anything co uh, commercial. I'm just using it to show as an illustration. All right, so we're gonna go back here, our background. Yeah, we we'll double click, double click twice to go in here and then we click on this to be here. So we double click again and then delete this image by just pressing delete. So this is the background that we have here. It's black. And so we do this and we'll make this bigger. Okay. So this is on top of all of the other stuff in um, design. We have what they call layers. Everything is placed in terms of layers. So we have this on a different layer, the text, and the background on a different layer. So we want the text to be in front of the picture. So what we can do is to right click, right click on the one we want, and then we see bring forward or bring to front. So let's bring to front. It's now in front of the layer of the picture. But the picture is still a layer above the background. So we do almost the same thing. And then we click on replace background. And so we have our picture just behind it, right? So let's click on this. Let's double click on this and make it much more larger. I want to make it larger to fill the entire screen, just like what we had with the pizza. Um, Template. So I'll just move it forward. Just I'm clicking and dragging. Click, drag to make bigger. All right. So I click done or tap out, and then we have this here. Okay. So we can further go to transparency, and we reduce the transparency. Now remember the color of our background is black, right? And so when we are making something transparent, because it's on top of that layer. It's taking the properties of the black. So if we reduce transparency away, we get our black back. So we're just increasing it further. And then we have this. So the text is now a way kind of like contrasting with the picture. So like I said, when you know the principles in terms of um, design, you will know that contrast is one principle or one element of design that should be obeyed. So we have this is in white and it says it's a pizza party. So what we have to do now is to edit. I'm double clicking just to edit this. But as you can see, if I move this around, because we can always move um, objects on our art board around. If I move this around, everything works with it. So I want to be able to break them apart or have them individually. So just right click and you see on group. That means they were grouped together. So now when you click on group, they're now different. Each one of them is separate. So we can now tweak or move them away and then change the text that we want. So we say, rather than pizza party, we say, this is fisherman soup. The picture of the background, I will say fresh fisherman. All right, so we can make it, drag it, so make it fit in. I think the text is too much, so I'm reducing it from the angles here, not from here. 
because when I do this, it's breaking them up into this. So I just use this and the angles and reduce it a bit. So your business name or business logo needs to come up here. And uh, rather than saying have a slice, you can delete this one by pressing delete, just click and delete. Let's bring in our logo. So if you have your logo, or you don't have a logo, you can upload it here and have it on um, a uh, background, without a background, so you can place it directly on your design. So I'm just gonna use the rooftop logo here because we have uh, it ready. So this is the white version. And when you click on it, it appears, and we reduce the size. So we have root of fresh fisherman soup here. Right. So when you use Canva, when you're placing something, you can see that there's some invisible ruler lines that help you get your perspective right. I can know if this is the center of our page. So we just place it here because we want it to be at the center. So if you take the next class on designing wild graphics, you understand a whole lot about proportions and placing um, objects on your design. So with this, we just go to, so go to, we can put a telephone number for you to order or all of those things. So we just took a template and have this wonderful simple flyer for you to put out there. You can change and put your website on it. Alright, so you can add much more text that you want. You can do a call to action and then voila, we have a simple simple um, flyer for us to work with. Now this is very very simple, but we can still go further and say okay, let's introduce shapes. I want to show you what elements are here. Shapes, just to give you some idea of uh, what you can do with this. And so I will use Somewhere like this is free, it's a gradient. The gradient field, we can always turn it to one color. So let's say I use this gradient. Yeah. And I can always change the color of the gradient. As you can see up here, we have the three colors that make up this gradient. We have the green fading into the blue and then the um, pinkish purple color. And then we can now change it to see what we can do with it. So I'll change this from green. I'll change this to blue because the root of colors are blue. And then one more blue. All right, so we have this here. And we don't want it to disturb the, um, the picture at the background. And so I just take it up here and put this. This is now behind this layer. So right click and bring forward. Okay, let's do this for this. We'll send this one, send backward. All right, so we have this here. And then remove this away up here and move this apart here. All right, so what I've just done now is to open up opportunities or places for me to place other information that I want or introduce it, a, a part of color that should help me contrast in um, whatever I was supposed to be Instagram. So just to catch attention. Remember your flyer design is meant to grab attention and communicate at the same time. So in my opinion, do not put too much stuff on it. Let uh, and it's for social media. So people are scrolling very fast. Let something call attention, either the text or the picture. Uh, in this case, I would just love to move this here so that you can see how luscious the fish is here and uh, reduce this a bit. So I'll leave all of the other text for my caption on Instagram. So you can play around with this and this is how you can work with this. So in my own opinion, I always like duplicating pages. And one of the things I like about duplicating pages so that I can always have um, page two, page three, I can change this now and say, let me work with, uh, let me work with something a little bit much more bigger. And rather than having transparency on our picture here, I'll reduce the opacity and increase it, right? And then 
take this logo and place it somewhere here. Now the, the other one is not showing. Take this one here and send this backward, send backward, and we have the text now in front of it. So we just drag it here. Now what we've done now is to call attention to fresh the type the name or the type of the meal that we're selling. And we can say fresh superman soup available now all this and then your logo is on the picture that you want it to be on is it under that variation of this so you have two variations you have two options that you can use you can select to choose all right so we can also change the font and let me show you about the font we can always change the font all right so with this i can change the fonts like i said i can change everything so just as if you're using Microsoft Word, you click and highlight, drag to highlight, and then we can change the fonts. So Canva has loads and loads of fonts. And I know that if you use Canva Pro, you can actually upload your own fonts for businesses so they can maintain what they call brand consistency. So it depends on what kind of fonts you like, but make sure you choose a font that is legible, not the one that is not going to be readable, and that's going to be a problem. So you can have, you seen, all the crowns here means meaning that you have to buy those fonts. The ones that have no crown means that they're free to use. So we'll just look for a font that we like or that I like. Depends on you, anyone you want to use. So I need something really nice and that can give it that, that um, idea of, uh, let's try this one. Let's look for something else. I see it. this is something nice. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, that, that does not work. For me, it's too funky and not readable. All right, so let's try this. Fisherman, okay. Let's try this one. All right, so selecting a font is something that you need to know. Okay, so I think because it's a capital letter, I'll just rewrite it. Fresh Fisher Man. Okay, so I'll just select all again and change the fonts. Uh, doesn't look nice. Let's try this. A server one. It shows this. Okay, this is cool. At least for now. So we can go around and check all the kind of fonts that we need. And this sits nicely. So this is the root of color. You could be your own brand color. You could choose all of those things. Then you can include your text. Sometimes you might not want it to be like this. You can bring in something else. Let's say this. Cheers to the new year. If you click on it, it just appears here. All right, so we have this, we can say fresh. Okay, so I double click that, so we have too much. All right, so this will bring here, so we just have to remove this. All right, I'll make this bigger. And uh, here, we'll just write Fisherman. So, all of this should be in white. So this is how to change text color. You just click on text. This is now white, highlight it, just like as if you're using Microsoft Word or Google Docs. And then we have this in white. All right, so I think this is funkier, nicer looking. For our box, this our circle is quite large. So what I can do is to reduce the size so that it doesn't overpower the, uh, the picture. So I can turn it a bit. So here you can see this rotating button. So if you click on it and drag, yeah, we have it almost like this. 
and then we'll take it in all right so voila we have this you can now include whatever other text you would like to bring in for this this is still not showing so we'll bring this here www.therootshop.com and the logo is here so we have a simple simple flyer that we can post and then you can write up stuff you can continue doing this to have different options in fact sometimes i can get up to 10 different pages even if i work with coral draw illustrator or photoshop i can have different options just gives me a variety to choose we don't just design one and take that one the more you keep trying out and rearranging things you begin to see um, or finally choose the right one so for business owners having lots of designs is, is cool so you can choose some of this so now it's time to show you how you can um, save this file so we have download okay so I'm, this is where i'm going to explain the different uh, formats that we have uh, we have png and it's suggested by canva for us to make it that um, png is portable network graphic this allows you to, if you were working on something that had no background, it will retain that transparency and you can work with that. That is also good for web or mobile because that is um, one of the fastest, is, is a scalable graphic that does not, um, con it's not so large, all right, and it's still high quality, so you can work there. So we have JPEG or JPG or JPEG, all uh, right, so small file size image, maybe smaller than this and this is um, it's also a standard that you can use too and then you have pdf standard pdf for print video and gif okay so let me explain the pdf standard and pdf for print um pdf standard means the small file size then you can have multiple page documents so i can save every one of this uh, these two pages as the pdf documents it's readable it's small size but when you want to go for prints and then for business owners who have created their stuff on the they, they might be thinking that oh, this software or this app we're using is too small and it's not usually good for printing. No, if you save it as a PDF for print, any printing press can access your file and get it ready to print. I've designed something on Canva that has been printed into a banner that was about 10 feet by um, like 5 feet or so. So PDF for print, make sure if you want to high quality stuff and you want it to be color separated, work with PDF for prints. The standard is for just viewing purposes or sharing purposes, a small file size and then multiple page. Video, um, that's if you're working with video and GIF, animated stuff. So let's select uh, PNG because it's for post, uh, for posting on social media. So we click that. So transparent background means that if you want transparent background, you go to Pro, then sizes and all of those things bigger than this, you go to Pro, then you compress. So here, select pages. I would just like to do page two. So I select only page two. I click done and then download. Okay, so it depends on um, your listen. So preparing your design creativity takes courage. Henry Matsise, who was an ex um, expert painter. All right, so it tells you try Canva Pro for three for thirty days, so you can continue editing the track for three days. But now I just close it, and um, our file has downloaded. So we just go to downloads, and then uh, we've seen our file. So we have our file ready for us to um, post on social media. You can look at the file several times. Look at your spelling errors. If it's if you're not satisfied, then the next thing to do is to take it to the uh, go back to here and edit to so cover edit and then re-download before you share. All right. So this is starting with Canva and working with a template and editing to own the template. Thank you so much for being part of this class, and uh, I'll see you in the next class. Bye bye.